Capita made this morning. What are you doing, Capita? Window repair. We have a big window broken. Oh yeah, we got some window repair to do because all that wind we've been sailing in recently is wreaking havoc on our Dodger windows. We've ripped a couple out wide open, as you can see. So I'm just stitching these ones back together now because the problem is all the stitching we had put in is not UV resistant. We had it done at a home upholstery place, so they did a reasonably good job, but the thread can't take the sun, and of course it's out in the sun all day every day, and it's just falling apart. So that's causing us endless amounts of grief, so I've got the proper thread now. We broke out our sale rate machine, got it in operation here, and just going back and putting in all new stitching to replace the bad stuff. Mm-hmm, great. So hopefully we don't have the issue again, because our next sail is going to be lots of wind and weather as well. And we don't want to do it with no windows. Yeah guys, if you... I'm going to show you the broken window. It's completely <clears throat> fall apart. It's all broken. It's all broken here. All and yes, it's very dangerous if you continue to work like this. Uh, I think so. We soon we don't have a window. Only solution. We have a very nice machine. Sorry, machine on board and fix it. Use a zigzag stitch, no? Rick? Yeah, I'm using a zigzag stitch as you can see. I've still got a little bit of tension issues here, so I'm gonna have to figure out, because I keep missing a couple of points once in a while. But at least I'll have all new stitches in with my own thread. So in the future, we can always reference my stitching to make sure everything is good, know that the windows aren't just gonna fall out again. So this stitching I got from Sailrite, and it's very durable, and of course meant for all outdoor work. So it should handle this job, no problem at all. Hey. I thought that she used white thread on the inside and blue on the outside because it's all navy blue except, well that's my new stitch there, but everything is navy blue but then white on the outside. But you can see underneath the eyebrow where it never hits the sun, it's still blue. But you see how oh, it just progressively yeah, fades it. to white. That's yeah. the old stitches there. So it's And faded. the white is because it's bringing the sun all the time. Yeah, it's just faded from sunlight, so it's not UV stable thread, and the thread just gave out in the sun, and then just started to rip and fall to pieces, so. Uh, I think so. Bad choice of thread. Yeah. But this thread, this is the new stuff I got from Sailrite. It's about $150 a roll, so it's very wow, expensive. Wow, yeah, it's very expensive. But it's a lifetime thread, and it's like a clear, so it goes on, and it kind of takes the color of whatever's behind it, but it resists UV, so it's very stable. It doesn't break, doesn't rip, or doesn't do anything. So this should be good for the life of the fabric, which I figure maybe we have about five years left, but yeah, we'll see. Right now we just gotta get our windows not leaking. And we have a big sail ahead. Good morning. It is 6 a.m. and we are ready to roll. The engine's already running, warming up, done all of our systems checks, engine oil, coolant, fuel filters, 
everything looks good. So everything is clean and ready. We've got everything stowed, locked down, and now we're just about to put up the mainsail and start bringing in the snubber. And we will get an early start on our next passage, which is going to be about 30 to 36 hours, just depending on the wind. Right now we're starting in very calm winds. And just checking all my lines, everything looks good. Yeah, we've only got about six knots of wind right now, but of course it's forecast about 18 to 20 for most of the day and the trip. So it should be a perfect run. Wind on the beam. We might have a bit of wind just uh, on the bow as we leave the exit here, just because of the shore effect. But I think after that, we should be in good shape and have a nice beam run, we hope. <laughs> we'll see. But for now, we are ready to say goodbye to our sleepy little town of Portobello. So bye-bye Panama. We are checked out and ready to go. And up goes the mainsail. Ready to start the day. Perfect. And you can just hear Portobello just starting to wake up. The birds are out fishing. Captain, tidying up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's good. Perfect. Seems perfect. Out hole's good and tight. So we run into some heavy winds. We don't have a big bag in the mainsail. So good. Now, can you stow the sheet though too, please, to halyard? Yeah. We need to wrap that up and just uh, tie it up there somewhere where it won't fall in the water. You see our neighboring pirate ships are still here. I think they're getting ready to leave soon too. Not today, but this week for sure. Very cool to see them come into Portobello. Just like a shift in time. Very cool. And we get to test our new remote for the first time today. Let's see how that works. Hopefully quite well. Turn it on and start bringing in the winch, the anchor. There we go, perfect. Good morning, Daddy. Are you ready to go on a long sail? Yes. Almost two days. <laughs> two days of sailing, mm, nice, Daddy. Yep, Daddy just bringing up some more of the anchor. No wind this morning. No, it's a little bit light, but it'll fill in. Almost clean. <laughs> a little bit of mud. Let's get all the mud off the deck. Okay, thank you. And we are ready to go. Alright. Anchor's free. Just need to put her in gear. Drop wash. Oh, neighbors are waking up. Think you ready? You have a good breakfast? Think you have a good breakfast? Very good girl. Say goodbye to our tall ship neighbors who are probably still sleeping soundly in their beds. They have very cool ships. Very nice to see those roll in. And now there's a sight you don't see off the bow of a sophisticated lady very often, <laughs> but a very cool sight. Wow. 
big old tall ship from Holland. Makes you feel like we should be readying our cannons in case they're readying theirs. Expect to see some guns or big cannons come shooting out of those holes anytime now. <laughs> Cute, they got their pet duck out the back. I believe they keep that out there in case anybody accidentally falls overboard, they've got a rope to grab hold of. Just look for the duck.
we're already one third of the way. Yeah, I was hoping to average seven knots, but we've been averaging eight, eight and a half, almost nine knots for the last while now, so yeah, we're smoking. Pounding down the miles, as they say. So, so far, so good. Beautiful trip, beautiful day. And the waves, two meters, some three meters, four meters go by. You know, we get slapped once in a while, a big splash comes over the side of the boat, but nothing too bad. No, it's been quite an enjoyable ride so far. Yeah, and the whole horizon just went perfectly clear. It's the first time in months we haven't seen any clouds on the horizon, which is beautiful. But that happens as soon as we get far enough away from Panama because the mountains really bring in the weather from the Pacific and the Caribbean side. So there's always clouds somewhere. But here, perfectly clear. And it's beautiful. You just sit here and watch this for hours now. Ruby's on his watch, I just finished mine, so. He's gonna sit there for the sunset. Yep. That should be nice. And yeah, if the wind might die down a little bit, we'll see. We've been averaging about 20 to 22 knots of wind. And sometimes recently it started dropping off to about 17, 18. So we might drop a little bit as we get closer to the sunset. We'll see. I got a reef in the jib right now and cracked the mainsail off a bit. So it's just bleeding some power out because we don't need full power. We're already doing eight and a half knots. And if the wind stays like this, we'll probably reef in some more of the jib going into sunset. We don't need any more power. So keep the boat comfortable, level, safe. That'll be the objective for the night. Just get there safe. And so far it looks like we should be there well on schedule. My hope is to be there by 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. 5 to 6, you know, latest before sunset. But I think we'll be 3 to 4 o'clock pretty easily if this keeps up. So we'll see. We'll see. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> you come to see daddy with your pillow? Hey, how's my little guy? You're learning your balance pretty good, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Keep your weight low. Uh-huh. Just enjoying the ride. Hey, buddy. Mr. Otto broke. Oh yeah? Wow. Hmm. Nice. Not a good day. No, what time is it? Half past six, seven o'clock in the night? Yeah, it's gonna be a long night. Very long. So Ruby's hand steering. Yeah. For lucky, we have a capital Ruby in full position. Not all night, but for now I'm still good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the mount off the autopilot and the bolt literally just snapped right in half. So that's what it's supposed to look like. But now it looks like that. Okay. Now, and what do you think? Well what? this this pin is also basically just I don't know if it's corroded or what, but I can't get the pin out. Now luckily I have a spare part for this end piece. Okay. But I don't have a spare part for this. So I have to make something and I've been looking through all my bins 
I've got this one bolt. <laughs> I've only got one, but it's exactly the right thickness to go through the hole in the rudder quadrant and stick out the other end. Okay, this is great, no? Well, yeah, but I'm still in the process of building it. This is what normally would be there because this pin needs to go on the bottom of it. But the threads were too big for this to pass over. So I just spent about half an hour for the file just taking down the threads just enough that this will pass over. Okay. So it passes over up to the shank now. So we're getting there. Uh, One step closer. Sorry. What are you doing, you? Wait, Daddy. Stop him, please. Come on, buddy. Get away. Okay. We need. To well, now the problem is the length. It needs to be exactly the same length. Yeah. And the same stick. Between this bolt. Yeah. And that bolt. Okay. That base. So I need to replicate that distance exactly or I can't get any pressure on it to squeeze the quadrant to hold it steady. And if I don't get it steady, then the whole bolt is just going to do this in the mount and it won't last an hour. It's got to be in there rock solid. So, I was thinking about something like this. I found one of these parts in my refrigeration parts, just a copper adapter and it would go on there, but it's much too big. It's too long. <clears throat> I need about half an inch. So I thought, well, I can hack, I can use a hacksaw and cut that down, but I'm never gonna get it perfectly square is the problem, and it needs to be perfectly square so that it's all balanced when I put the whole thing together and equal pressure from all sides. So could probably do it, but at sea, that would be a really neat trick. Well, I've been trying to think of what we have that would be just the right thickness. It needs to be about the same thickness as this piece here, just to cause that, give me that extra space that I need against the, the shank here. And <laughs> we started thinking about small things. And I, Maddie, Maddie actually said, I've got a ring that's almost that size. And then I thought, so do I. <laughs> and it's solid silver. And it's perfectly round. It's bigger than the shank, and it's perfectly matched on both sides. So I think that I can use that as my spacer. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do is give that a try and, and pray. Okay, there's the autopilot. And uh, it's engaged. Okay. There at the top you can see my ring. And that's taken up the space perfectly. And we don't seem to have much play in the system. It's not rocking back and forth. Okay, so that's good. So, so far so good. But yeah, I need to keep an eye on it for sure. Hopefully it'll get us there just through the night. Well, for bad luck, we broke the autopilot. <laughs> but for good luck, I was very lucky. I had the exact size of bolt that would fit the same location, just the right thickness to go through the rudder quadrant, the exact same size as the old one, and just the right length. It was just enough. If it was any shorter, it wouldn't have worked at all. But, and of course, the old ring trick. So of course I gotta rebuild it so I can get my ring back one of these days, but for now, it's getting us on our way. So that's good news. As you can see, Monsieur Le Auto is still running happily in the background here. And so far we've had a good sail. The winds have been consistent. We're still getting about 17, 18 knots, doing about seven and a half knots. So boat speed is good. Comfort's not too bad. Yeah, we slammed through a wave once in a while, but nothing too significant. And we got a full moon out tonight, almost. It's about three days away from the full moon, so yeah, it's lighting up the entire skyline very well, so it's very easy to see the horizon, which is always cool. So, so far so good. 
with no problems or complaints. Just lucky I was able to get the autopilot fixed. Now we just hope it keeps working. So far, so good. What are you doing, my friend? You gonna launch from inside? It's <laughs> <laughs> growing, it's too small. Crazy. <laughs> Flying in the house. I'm going to in your way. <laughs> I'm in the way. Don't hit the hammocks. <laughs> The, the reason of this malice. You're a brave man. <laughs>